So I'm here now with Gillian Einstein. She's from the University of Toronto. Um, the focus of her research is really around hormones and um, how it relates to Alzheimer's disease. Hi, Gillian. Hi. So first, let's start with just basically what role do hormones play in our brain? Well, we know from animal studies that um, estrogens and androgens have receptors in the brain on neurons as well as glial cells. So the cells that communicate with each other and the cells that protect the cells that communicate with each other, um, they're all responsive to um, estrogens and androgens. And um, there are receptors on those cells and the receptors enable the estrogens and androgens to have both short-term and very long-term effects. So I guess most importantly, and what a lot of women would want to know, is when you reach menopausal age and you have a drop in estrogen, what does that mean for your brain? Well, it's a complicated question because it depends on each woman. It depends really on where you started with estrogen and where you ended up with estrogen in menopause. And if you don't end up too different than where you started, you're probably in pretty good shape. Uh, if you have a, a big drop in estrogen, um, then that might be a problem. So how does this open the door for opportunities in research related to Alzheimer's disease um, and hormonal levels? Of course, the risk factors in Alzheimer's disease for men and women have been known to be different. And in women, one of the risk factors is menopause. Um, it's not as strong as age itself or APOE status, but the lowering of estrogens, people think, removes a protective effect on the brain. Um, and this protective effect does have to do with making connections between neurons and growing neurons um, that estrogen is so good at doing. People have begun to hypothesize that menopause itself might be a risk factor, but I have to um, emphasize that it really depends on individual women. So are we seeing more women with early onset? Well, I don't think we're seeing significantly more women with early onset. Um, unless you actually take the population of women who've had a severe hormonal drop, uh, then they would probably have an earlier onset. Uh, but we don't completely know that yet. I do think if you looked at a particular group of women, you would see that among women, women who've had their um, um, ovaries removed and therefore are no longer making um, endogenous or in, they're not making their own estrogen, they have a higher risk. You said different women have different um, declines in estrogen. When you say if it's a more significant drop, what is that drop exactly? What is a significant yeah. drop? Yeah, so obviously a sig more significant drop depends on what you made before. But usually um, in measuring, measuring um, estrogen in the urine, uh, it's, about <laughs> it's about 30 picograms per mil. So it seems like a very small amount, but it's a small amount that has a big effect. Right. In the blood, um, it's, a, it's a completely different kind of measure. Um, if you really want to know what your brain is seeing, um, spit into a tube and give somebody your saliva to analyze. So where are we in research, like knowing how hormones impact Alzheimer's? Like what, what is research trying to address in the longer term? Um, research is trying to address really how estrogen loss, either through natural menopause or prior to natural menopause, might set the stage for quicker neuro neurodegeneration, loss of neurons, accumulation of beta amyloid, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the unfortunate things about this field is that even though over 70%, as far as I can tell, uh, of the populations being studied are women, people aren't reporting their results uh, as women and men. And they're not actually looking at risk factors, particularly salient for women, such as estrogen levels or loss of estrogen. One thing I did want to talk to you about was um, your study where you studied women who had had their ovaries removed at a younger age. Um, tell me a little bit about that study and what you determined from it. We're studying women who've had their ovaries removed 
for medical reasons. They're a very healthy population. Most of them have their ovaries removed between the ages of 35 and 45. And so our average age is around 45. We're asking them questions about memory. We're giving them memory tests and we're doing brain scans. And um, we're also looking at immune function, inflammation, um, and we're starting to hopefully gather biomarkers actually. And what we found, we have changes in um, remembering a story or remembering a list of words over a delayed period. Women who have had their ovaries removed do more poorly on those tasks. And this is also correlated with the, um, the volume of a brain area that's uh, very vulnerable in Alzheimer's disease called the hippocampus. How many people have you have participated in that study? We have 60 participants in the study now who have had both ovaries removed. And some with hormone replacement, some with not, right? Yeah, okay. about half are on hormone replacement now. Okay. The preliminary conclusion is hormone replacement therapy greatly benefits these women then, right, in terms of brain health. It helps them, that's yeah. for sure. The other thing is if you still have your uterus, that means that you need to have progesterone. If you want a natural progesterone, you do not want a synthetic progesterone. Meta-analysis studies show that the synthetic progesterone seems to be a pretty bad actor. I really feel that people have underestimated estrogens for an awfully long time. I think, first of all, people haven't really gotten the connection yeah. between the ovaries and the brain. Yeah. Um, but but I, also, yeah. I, I don't think people, you know, what other drug have people been put on besides hormone replacement where they were put on it like it was candy and then whipped off it yeah. like it had no effect? Yeah. It's a very power, you know, estrogens and androgens are very powerful actors. They act all over the body. They act on bone, they act on heart. Um, every single body system is sensitive. The message I would have for people who have Alzheimer's disease in their family is that I would say keep your ovaries if you possibly can. Yeah, yeah. And if you, if you have them taken out, really seriously consider hormone replacement. Yeah.